Hey guys, this is Lyndon here from Visionary Universe and today I have a really nice effect for you guys. It's this cool invisibility ghostly effect. I, actually, today is Halloween, so I guess it's kind of an appropriate effect for this time of the year. So here we go. We're going to start creating this and it's actually really nice because we're going to learn a lot of new techniques and uh, hopefully you'll learn a lot in this tutorial. So I will create a new composition. Let's make this, you know, just the right size, frame rate, whatever you want. And then I'm going to go ahead and drag in our background. So it's too large and what I like to do is go to transform and hit fit to comp width. There we go and just move this up. I want it to be like this. There we go. Uh, we can actually go to a line and go boom like that. That's a sweet. sweet. Alright now, um, I'm going to go ahead and drag in our footage layer. And this is a, actually a keyed out video of one of my friends. This guy's name is Jody. Meet Jody. Alright Jody. Okay now. So, okay, we're going to turn Jody into a displacement map. Alright, so we know that displacement map distort the background. That's essentially what the ghost effect is doing is kind of distorting the background. So we're going to turn Jody into a displacement map. But the problem is, displacement maps distort, you know, white pixels one way and black pixels the other way. Um, and there's too much black. He's wearing too much black. And this is actually a scene from a movie I'm working on, which, you know secretive so like I was saying there's too much black on Jody and it's going to distort the pixels too much in one direction so I have this really nice technique for fixing that and this is this is one of my favorite effects if I had to pick my top three this would definitely be in the top three so let's go it's called shadow and highlights so it's this effect right here and we're going to drag this onto the footage layer and why this is really cool is it it brightens those shadows but it's not just like going to curves and brightening shadows it actually brightens shadow areas not just the pixels all right i'm not going to go into details about how this works but it's really awesome it brightens the shadows and it does it like no other effect so it's really awesome so i'm gonna go ahead and uncheck auto amounts and i'm gonna turn this up all the way so we gotta remember that this is not like footage that's gonna be in our scene it's, we're turning this into a map so it may look crazy but it doesn't look crazy for a map all right so here we go let's go ahead and turn the highlight amount up all the way so it kind of darkens is the bright spots and uh it would be good to get somebody who doesn't have like such a black costume because see there's not much detail in this most of the detail is actually grain which we do not want grain because it causes a lot of distortion issues and we can actually go ahead and fix the grain by doing a uh, remove grain effect so to remove grain is going to take away some of that grain so what we're going to do here is just ch change this to final output that's going to remove a lot of that grain and even still we need another shadow and highlight effect because his shirt's too dark compared to the rest of his body. So let's go ahead and duplicate this shadow and highlight and move it under the remove grain effect. And so it's too intense. Let's change this to like 25 and 25. So there we go. We got this nice matte. Now his shirt was dark, but now it's kind of the same colors as everything else. Like I said, I would definitely try to get your actor with not so dark clothing so that there can be some detail in the distortion. But I just did an extreme example here to show how you can fix it with this sweet shadow and highlight effect. So let's go ahead and tint this to one color. T-I-N-T. And uh, what we're going to do is do a solid composite. So let's go ahead and drag this on here. So it's uh, we need to make the solid composite gray so that it won't be distorted in those areas because displacement maps do not distort gray. All right. And then we need to make sure that Jody's the right brightness. So let's go ahead and add a fast blur and let's put it after the solid composite effect. So we'll blur it out. So we can see that Jody's a little bit too dark. You can see that he's averagely he's too dark. We'll add a brightness and contrast effect. We'll put this before the solid composite and just brighten it up until it seems about right. I think that's about right right there. So there we go. There is our Jody mat. And then we're going to actually fast blur just a little bit so that displacement map won't be so jagged. I mean, that works nice. And then we're ready to pre-compose this mat. All right? Because the way displacement maps won't work, they won't recognize your adjustments unless you pre-compose. So make sure and hit move all attributes into new composition. Hit OK. So there we go. We have a mat for the displacement. So let's go ahead and start adding the displacement. And what we're going to do is add an adjustment layer. Control alternate Y and then we'll add a displacement map. Alright, so here's a displacement map and let's go and apply this to the adjustment layer. And then for the displacement map layer, we'll make sure and check the layer that we made. Alright, so and then we can, we're ready to go ahead and distort. So here's where the awesomeness comes in. Let's go ahead and change this to like 200 and change this to like 200 as well. There we go, we have this sweet um, invisibility looking effect. Let's go ahead and take a preview to see how this looks so far. Alright, so there we go. It looks nice. That's a pretty sweet invisibility effect. Alright, so um, there's kind of some problems. Uh, it looks too... Um, you can see some pixel errors right here. Let's go ahead and turn this to full resolution to see those uh, errors. And basically, there's a pretty easy way to fix this. What we need to do is add a fast blur before the displacement map. Alright, so if we fast blur this out to about 8 pixels or so, that's going to kind of fix out 
those errors, those um, interlacing errors, or whatever you want to call them. So there, he looks better. But the problem is, it actually blurred the entire layer. All right, so the, 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 the map is only applied to the displacement map, not the fast blur. So the fast blur is going to blur everything. Let's hit repeat X pixels. All right, so we got to fix this so that the fast blur does not blur everywhere else. What we're actually going to do is go into our Jody layer and then copy this and go back to our other layer and paste it. So there, there's our layer. We gotta remove all these effects. Now we have an outline of our actor, and what we're gonna do is go to the adjustment layer that has the effects on it. Go to the track mat. If you don't see it, just toggle switches right here, and then go to alpha mat. So the adjustment layer is only going to exist where the where the actor is. What I'm actually gonna do is add a turbulent displace, and this is gonna add some ripple along with the displacement map. Add an expression to the evolution. Hold Alt. The stopwatch. We're gonna do time time 400. Offset turbulence. What I'm gonna do is add an expression to that, and then I'm gonna do an array. And then for the x value, I'm gonna do uh, zero. And for the y value, I'm gonna do time times negative uh, 600. So there we go. So it's gonna animate that um, turbulent displace upward. I'm gonna make the distortion much smaller. So let's go ahead and go to the size and make this uh, turn this down quite a bit. Go to the complexity and do like two. I put it before the displacement map map effect. And now what I want to do is add that blue color to them. So let's do like a tritone and then we can go ahead and apply this and then we can just make this kind of a blue tinted color like this and then just blend with original about 50%. So there we go. We have this kind of blue ghosty color. Alright so that's looking very nice. We have the distortion, blue color and everything. It's starting to look like a ghost. Yeah. Alright so one thing I do want to do is turn the displacement, the opacity of, this, of the displacement map down a little bit. So we'll double click on displacement, go to the compositing options, and then turn this down to like 75. There we go, it just turns down the displacement map effect just a little bit. And then I'm going to add one more effect, and this is the vector blur. And the reason why I want to add vector blur is, it, is because we don't have to blur this background so much. So we can turn this down to like 4, and then there's a little bit of issues, but if we go to the vector blur and turn this up to like 4, then it'll get rid of some of those issues. So now we need to go ahead and start adding some glow to all this. Um, what we're going to do is actually duplicate our actor layer, so this layer right here, and then I'm going to do a fill effect. We're going to make this kind of a blue ghostly color like this, and then I'm going to add a fast blur to all this. So crank this up quite a bit like that, and repeat edge pixels so it doesn't ruin his feet. There we go, that looks nice. And what we're going to do is turn this to like add, alright? So it's going to kind of add that glow to it, and we can turn this, the brightness of this down to make the effect less dramatic if we need to. Turn the fast blur up. There we go. We have this nice, uh, have this nice haze glow over, and they're making it look more ghostly. So we're gonna do something cool with this glow right here. What we're gonna do is add a turbulent displace to it. Mm-hmm. And then what we're gonna do is go ahead and animate the evolution to time times 300 offset turbulence, and then add an array. And then we're gonna make the x value like time times negative 200, and the y value time times negative six or 700. 700. All right. So we're going to go ahead and turn up the complexity so we can see a little more of that distortion there. There we go, just like that. So this is going to form as the mist kind of floating off the ghost, and it's going to be a glow at the same time, so it's kind of cool. Uh, I may turn on the size a little bit. Yeah, there we go, that's the mist that's kind of floating off of the ghost, so sweet. Let's go ahead and composite this on to see how it looks. Alright, let's go ahead and check out a preview for this. Alright, we're getting there. Not half bad. Alright, so I think the ghost is a little too opaque. So we're going to go ahead and go to this the adjustment layer that has all the ghost effects to it. And just turn the opacity down to like 75. I mean, I think it looks good right there. So it's more of a ghost. Alright, and then you want to kind of color correct your background to make it blend in with the feel of the scene. So, so why don't we add a curves effect and go ahead and bring the highlights down, the gamma down. So let's, then we'll add a tritone. Alright, and then I'm going to go make this more of a blue tint. And also what you actually could do is add a shadow and highlight before all those effects. So you, you can judge whether that's better or not. But basically it's going to brighten these spots so they don't get so dark. Alright, so our ghost effect is really coming together. I'm going to check out another preview. I know it's, when I'm watching the tutorials, it's really nice just to, just to see the effect quite often so I can see what's going on. So I'm going to make sure and do a lot of previews. Alright, so that's a pretty quickly moving ghost. I think he needs to slow down a little bit. Be a little more scary, but I don't know, whatever. Alright, so let's go ahead and go to the original. And you can see here there's little some, like, sparks and everything coming off of him. And I don't think we have time to completely cover this. Actually, this example is more like ghostly. This one is more like an aqua creature. 
you know, whichever one you want. Basically, it's all the same, just brighter, added up brightness, more brightness to the other one. You know, just whichever effect you're going for. It should be easy just to go between this effect or this effect, just, you know, whatever. All right, and so let's go ahead and think about the spark. Just duplicate the Jody layer and then go ahead and remove all these effects. Oh, not bad. That is not, looks like a hologram. Turn this to normal. And then we have to make this a 3D layer because the particles cannot emit from anything other than a 3D layer. So we're going to create a new solid to place the particles on. So let's go ahead and go to Particular. And I think Particle World actually might have the same features. I'm not sure about that. But for this, we have to use Particular. Let's go to the emitter Go to the, and change the emitter type to layer. So that's basically what we're doing. We're emitting from the Jody layer. So we're, let's choose this to uh, top Jody layer. Turn the Jody layer off. All right, so they're going to emit. And we make sure and turn this to none so they're white particles. And then we have to be sure, be sure to change this layer sampling to particle birth time. If you didn't know that and you watched this video and if everything else was useless, it would be worth it because you found out particle birth time. You have to change it to particle birth time. So, All right, so then we got to change this to like two more zeros, to like 10,000. We have to have a lot of particles, all right? And so basically how this is going to work, it's just going to emit. And we have to turn the velocity down to zero and then turn the emitter size down to zero. So we have to turn the velocity down to zero and the emitter size down to zero to have that nice turbulent look. Because if they're velocity, it's all going to scatter and just look at scattered particles. So let's go to physics, air, and go to the turbulence field. We'll change this. We'll go ahead and turn the effect position up. What I like to do is turn the scale down to about 8, turn the auto multiplier up to about 1.3, and then we're going to add some wind. So we may add some X wind and add some Y wind. And then what we really need to go do is go to the particle and make them much smaller. It's so about like one or two. All right, so there we go. There's our particle effect. You can do other things to it. I'm not sure what all you need to do. But let's go ahead and change the color. You can change it to more of blue because that's more appropriate. And then we can change this to more like add. All right. So there we go. We have this these nice particles coming out of it. And we need to make sure and have it behind the uh, adjustment layer. So that it looks like it's inside of him coming out rather than being in front of him. And uh, maybe we do need to brighten him a little bit. So let's go ahead and add a brightness of contrast rather than curves. Bright brightness of contrast is easier on our computer. So let's go ahead and turn this up a little bit. A lot of cool techniques involved. All right, so there we go. That's our ghost effect. And this one turned out a lot different than the other one. I kind of like this look. This one looks more realistic and more ghostly and more scary. And the original example, I spent a lot more time on those particles making them look more real. Maybe making them look smaller. Just, you know, tweaking them and turning the turbulence and everything until they look just right. And so that's what you want to do. Just kind of mess with the particles so they look just right. And just for an example, this is actually how the original particles look. A little more turbulence, you know, it's actually pretty cool looking. I just spent a little more time trying to make this look good. And uh, I'm sorry I didn't have much time to prepare for this tutorial. I guess I didn't run through it so smoothly, but I really wanted to submit it on Halloween Day. So whatever, I actually thought about this tutorial like an hour ago. So I wasn't so prepared, but hopefully you guys did learn some cool techniques. And, you know, just make sure and tweak these settings. Make it just how you like it. You know, there's two different looks. This one came out looking one way, the other one another way. And this one actually looks pretty sweet, so I actually do really like this one. If you guys would leave a like, that would be great. I hope that's not a problem. And consider subscribing to Visionary Universe. It's been fun. It's been so fun. I will catch you in the next video.